In this video, we're going to be drawing uh, a vector type of uh, cityscape using straight lines, so you're going to need a ruler, and concentric circles. Coming up. Let's get going. All right, so uh, what we're going to do is uh, you need a sheet of paper just like this. You need a pencil, and if you want to have a marker, you can, and a ruler. Ruler is very important. Now, with that said, the colors that you need are warm colors, such as yellow, orange, and red, and you need some cool colors, such as green, purple, and blue. So what we're going to do is we're going to hold our paper horizontally just like this, and then we're going to evenly place odd like um, or differently height buildings. Now, in order to do these buildings, uh, you're just going to draw one line. Let me explain. So what I'm going to do is maybe I'll do a line right here. And I'm going to do my next one, maybe right here. Maybe this will be really short. Maybe I'll make one really tall. And maybe I'll make one really short again, or maybe different height. And then this one will be my tallest one. So I'm going to make this one all the way up here, just like so. And then maybe another one right there. So about five or six lines. I did one, two, three, four, five, six. I did six. And it fits really good on my paper. Now, uh, we'll do the concentric circles later. I'll explain what those are in a little bit. Now, in order to make these into buildings, I'm going to be doing uh, something very specific with the tops of them. Now, before I do that, I'm noticing that you guys can't see the pencil lines really right away. So I'm going to go directly with Sharpie. Now, you don't have to do Sharpie uh, because um, I don't want you guys to worry about starting over on a new sheet of paper so if you need to erase go ahead but i'm going to do this in marker that way it's easier to see on video all right now when it comes to the triangles on top to make sure the buildings are three-dimensional i'm going to show you something what not to do uh using this other side of the paper so i'm going to use a blank sheet um maybe i'll just flip it over here <laughs> okay here we go now when it comes to making three-dimensional buildings there's a wrong way and there is a good way now the bad way okay is making sure that the triangles are very nice and pointy like that you don't want that to happen and i'll show you why but for the good way you want the arrows to be nice and wide and you'll see what happens so if i bring out bring down these sides of the triangle like this and like this the building looks like you're looking too far down below like a worm's eye view and uh you don't want that to happen you want it to make it look like it's still three-dimensional but a little more higher up so if i bring these arrows down the building looks a lot better so now i can like add windows i can add a door down below etc now again wide arrow is better narrow arrow is a lot worse so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna use that technique on these arrows over here so what i'm gonna do um, I'm going to add some arrows using my ruler. I'm going to start with the bottom one first, or shortest one. And again, they can go long like this, or they can be nice and short like that. So it doesn't matter the length. I'll just make sure you don't collide with another one or another vertical line. So maybe this one will go only up to here. This one will go there. So I'm just going to do this side since my ruler is facing this direction. And then I will go back and uh, do more in a little bit. Maybe this one will go like this. And maybe I'll go this one off the page completely. Ta-da! All right, in order to make them into buildings, you don't want to start off with the tallest building first. That's bad. I'll explain that in a little bit. You want to start off with the smallest building like this. So I'm going to start off with my smallest arrow. So my first building is done. My next tallest building is either this one or this one. I'm going to pick this one right here. Again, using a ruler. Two buildings done. Now here comes the part where I mentioned that it's very important that you do the smallest buildings first. The reason why we do the smallest buildings first is because you're not going to have an issue right here, but you're going to have an issue on the next line because there's a building in the way. So you want to make sure you stop where that shortest building is so it looks like it's behind. Now you see what happens when you do the tallest buildings first. So that's that's the only reason why you don't want to do that. So again, next tallest building is this one. I should have no issues. Next one is this one. So I do have issues on both sides. So I have to stop early. This one right here, you got to stop early. See, that's why we do short to tallest. Now for this one, I'm going to do something special. I'm going to add more arrows on the bottom, just like this. And then, if I just start on the bottom like this, I could just bring it down, get the smallest one first, and then the top one, just like this. So now this one can kind of mimic the Sears Tower, 
just like that. It's pretty cool, huh? And if you want to add antennas, you can. But before we do that, we want to add um, some more buildings. If you want to add more buildings, you can. It's very simple how to add more. All we got to do is add more arrows. So if I just add more random lines here and there, so maybe one right here, maybe one right here, maybe one number one right here. What I just did is I just added more buildings and I'll show you guys how to do that. So all I gotta do is add the arrows on top. So here I go. Arrow. This one's gotta stop right there. This one can probably go all the way. This one can go off the page. And I can do the other sides. Here we go. Here we go. This one can probably stop at that tall building right there. This one can probably go this way. And this one can probably go all the way off the page. All right, now I gotta do is finish off the buildings that I couldn't. Right here, there, and I think I have one more line. Actually, let's make this a little bit longer so it's not meeting up with the other one. All right, there we go. All right, I have my buildings. It covers the majority of the bottom. If you wanna add windows, you can. All right, now what I'm gonna do is add a concentric circle to resemble either a moon or resemble a sun. So I'm gonna add my circle on top. Now, if you wanna have something to trace with, I don't at the moment because I don't have any small circles right now. I thought I had a circle tracer somewhere, but um, if you don't, you could do what I just, you could do what I'm about to do is I'm just gonna freehand it. There you go. All right, so that's gonna be my center. I'm gonna do is concentric circles. Now, what concentric circles are, are circles that have the same center point. So if I did circles like right beside it, they don't have the same center. However, if I just do circles like the ripple project, just like this, they're sharing the same middle. All I gotta do is make them larger and make sure that they're evenly spaced apart. You don't want them too close together because it's gonna be harder to color. And you don't want them to be too far apart because there's gonna be a big block of color later on. Now again, if you hit the buildings, all you gotta do is pretend to go behind them, just like so, and then continue on like nothing happened. See? Again, you use that same technique with the edge of the paper. So if you go off the paper, that's okay. Just pretend that you just kind of come back just like that. Same with in between the buildings. So this one right here, this little corner, that corner is done. This whole sheet of the paper is done. All I gotta do now is do the other side, just like this. And then all I gotta do is just do curve, curve, and curve to resemble more circles coming off that same center point. And ta-da, the sky is done. Now, what's gonna do, what we're gonna do now is add some windows and we'll go from there and I'll teach you guys how to color it in a little bit. So let's speed up the video because this might take a while. <laughs> Okay, um, I'm gonna be done with windows for now. I could keep going, but I don't wanna waste too much of your time and the video will be too long. So what I'm gonna do now is talk about how to color this project. Now, um, what you're gonna need is warm colors and cool colors. Warm colors is gonna give you more of a daytime scene in the sky. Cool colors is gonna give you more of a nighttime scene in the sky. However, whatever you choose for the sky will be the opposite for the buildings. So again, if you choose a nighttime sky with cool colors, your buildings are gonna be warm. So your buildings are gonna be yellow, orange, and red. However, if you choose a warm sky, kind of like a sunset, so yellow, orange, and red in the sky, then your buildings will be the opposite of that, which is cool colors. So your buildings will be purple, green, and blue. So you wanna choose which one you like. Um, I don't have an example right now. Maybe I'll post one here and here. If I don't, I apologize, but I'll try to do my best to try to find one online. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure I have these colors at hand. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start off with the sky first. That way I don't smudge what I'm gonna be doing right here because I don't wanna go this direction. I am righty. So I'm gonna make sure I go from top left to bottom right. That way I don't smudge anything. So what I'm gonna do is I think I'm gonna choose to do the sky a darker color. So I'm gonna do cool colors instead. So I'm gonna pick my blue. I'm gonna pick my purple. And I'm gonna pick my green right here. If I can find my green. Let's try the darker green. Is this dark green? That's not dark green. Where's my dark green? Oh, here it is. All right, so here's the three colors I'm gonna be using for my sky. 
I'm gonna do uh, blue to resemble my centerpiece. And if you wanna add a little bit of highlight to resemble um, kind of like a lighter moon of some sort, you can. Or if you wanna leave it white, you can. And then I'm gonna go uh, with the next color, which is purple. And again, you don't have to do it in a sp specific order like I would normally do with the Roy G. Biv rainbows that we used to do in second grade. But um, uh, that's how I'm gonna do it. So here we go. Here's my purple. And it's small enough for me to do a circle technique of coloring. The next one I'm gonna do is green. And it's still small enough for me to do the circle technique of coloring. All right, just gotta be super careful when I'm coloring this. <laughs> I don't wanna mess up. Uh, if I mess up, it's okay. It's always okay to mess up, guys. But it's an example for you guys, so I don't wanna mess up. <laughs> all right, all right. The circles are gonna be way too large for me to do the circle technique of coloring. So I'm gonna do the half circle technique of color. All right, so my next color is gonna be blue. So I'm gonna color these in sections now because I don't have enough space to go one side. All right, so you're just gonna keep going until the whole sky is done. Now, before we get started and before you keep going, I do have a little trick for you guys to make it a little bit uh, easier for you guys to see which color is which. And it's this. So what I'm gonna do, so I don't mess up, because I've seen people do like back to back the same color. Uh, what I like to do is I have to mark off how many steps I need to go in order to do the next color. So I'm gonna cut off, call, uh, sorry, I'm gonna count off two. So one, two, so this one's gonna be blue. One, two, so this one's gonna be blue. One, two, so this section and this section right here is gonna be blue. One, two, so this section's gonna be blue. One, two, this section right here is gonna be blue and this section's gonna be here right blue. I might as well color it while I'm here. All right, so does everyone see how that's gonna make it your life a little bit easier? Just by marking it off. So next one after that is purple. So I'm gonna mark off this section purple. I might as well just do it like that. This part above the blue, so this section right here is purple as well. Okay, there is no blue right there. So there's a purple in this section right here, purple right here, and there's purple right here. And for green, green is pretty simple. It's everything else. So there's green right here, green right there, there's green right here, green right there, and then there's green at the very end. All right, so what I just did was I just mapped out what the sky's gonna look like, and now I can just go back with just one color, and I can just fill out what I did. So it's kind of like color by number, but instead you're kind of marking it yourself. <laughs> So this might take a while, so if I have to fast forward the video, I will do it right now. done with the blue um if you don't feel like coloring this in marker colored pencil or crayon uh, paint is still an option as well we normally do paint during school for this project uh we normally do it on uh painting paper too but um with that said uh crayon works just as fine so i'm just done with the sky uh it's all cool colors so you can imagine what the next step is going to be and it's going to be the buildings the buildings are going to be the opposite of that and the opposite of cool colors is warm colors so again you could have done the opposite you could have made the cool uh warm colors on the outside but um i'm gonna do the opposite so i'm gonna have my buildings be the warm colors so i'm gonna make sure i pick the correct colors here it's so orange yellow and my red my red's always running out there we go all right so when it comes to coloring the buildings you don't want the colors to collide or else it's gonna be one giant blob so if i did red on this building like this over here so i'm just gonna do it super quick if i do red on this building right here and um so let me just finish this up real quick. <laughs> I picked a really big building. Um, but then if I picked another half the building uh, right over here, it's gonna look like a big mess over here. So we wanna make sure that colors that are beside the red, so maybe this section right here, should be a different color. So maybe I'll pick yellow. And then color over here should be either yellow or orange. I'm gonna pick yellow again. Just like that. And then on this small section right here, because there is a yellow right here and I don't want the yellows to collide, I'll put an orange right there. So just try your best to make sure that the colors aren't colliding together, just like how the sky is. And then you'll have a more even uh, set of buildings over here. 
and you do, if you do have windows, you can color them yellow or blue. Uh, it's up to you. Or if you want to leave them white, you can leave them white. Um, I think I might color them over because I don't want to waste time. But we'll see if I can get around them. Uh, so let's just fast forward the video and let's keep coloring. I'm almost done, so I'm just gonna start framing out for you guys, so that way it's easier to see. Uh, notice how um, the windows look super great. So if you do have extra time in the beginning before you even like start the color, uh, it's really cool if you just decide to do all windows on every single panel of the buildings, and then your project will look even better. Now, if you don't have the time like how I do, um, you don't have to do windows on every single building. But um, either way, this is what the project looks like. Um, I wish I had a picture to show you right here or right here to show you um, what it looks like if it was opposite. But if I do, then I'll show you. But um, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this lesson. I'm sure I did. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.